Okay, let's get into this week's video, and this one's on responsibility. Now, I can go on about this all day because my head hurts from all the BS I'm hearing from people out there, but I want to keep it down to a few minutes if I can, so I'll get right into it. I've listed six ways to become responsible for yourself, how people can do it for themselves, and they're based off recent conversations I've been around where I would rather have been smothered in honey and tied to an ant's nest because no matter what you offer some people, they prefer to stay where they are and complain and blame about everything other than what they are doing. I'll do my best to try and smile now and then for the camera. However, the energy I'm in may make it a little bit difficult. So let's get right into it. Now imagine thinking you have to wait for an election in order for things to change, or the promotion, the grades, the business deal, or worse yet, the acceptance of others. Living in a vice and cocooned between election campaigns, job interviews, or a lucky break. Stuck, tethered, conditioned. Compliantly waiting for permission to take your next sticky tentative step and fearful to get it wrong or perhaps offend somebody who disagrees. Too many people live like this and they've normalized it. So many of these people will have inspirational fridge magnets or coffee mugs at home saying things like live in the present or shoot for the stars and at least if you fail you land on the moon, whatever that bloody phrase is. Um, or one of my favourites, you have to get lost in order to find yourself. Now these fridge magnet coffee mug people make me laugh. It's like they have created a system to make fun of themselves and stay miserable. They should put another quote that says, a peacock that sits on its tail is nothing but a turkey. Now, I find that they have a lack of action, a lack of boldness and a lack of courage. So in this video, I'm going to go through six things you can take responsibility for yourself so you don't have to rely on external elements to get what you want. And I'll share some personal examples of how they worked for me. Because one thing I learned from many years ago was to throw myself into the slipstream of life, ride the flow of it, knowing the direction it's moving. Sure, it could be bumpy, every new behavior is. However, once you keep doing it again and again, and then learn to calibrate, learn to trust yourself, things begin to happen much easier. There's no blame in the government, the company, the manager, uh, the team, staff, colleagues, uh, your circumstances, because you become responsible for what you want and then what you get. A big lesson for me at first was that I had to be okay with not knowing what will happen, because not knowing what will happen is where I've learned it all happens. Not knowing what is happening is actually the happening. It was difficult to let go of all the stories and all the comparisons and all the fabricated outcomes and simply make life happen into the direction I was willing it, where I was choosing it to go. So before I get into the six things which you are responsible for, I want to add this. A person's identity is defined by their behaviours and their habits and these are created from their beliefs. To get clearer on your beliefs, you first want to get clearer on your values. Lead with your values and you will live a more successful life because they become your very own terms and conditions. So become aware of, of what your behaviours are and if they are enabling and aligning with you. Uh, become radical with this. Track every single area you wish to improve by creating an awareness around the stories you are telling yourself while in that behaviour. From there, identify the core values which are being neglected and then build the beliefs around them. After that, live the behaviours. Simples. So now I'm going to give you the six uh, examples where you can be your own responsibility. I could give you 60, 600 of them. However, I've got things to do, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Number one, continuous learning. 
So take charge of your own education and skill development. Don't wait for formal education or jo job training programs. Seek out learning opportunities online. Attend workshops and read relevant materials. Learn about yourself. Remember, uh, when you were a child and how curious you were, there was learning and experimenting in everything you'd done. Then, as we aged, we focused more on not getting it wrong than we did the process of learning how we learn to understand things ourselves. We were introduced to expectations from school and from teachers who graded us, to parents who wanted us to be a certain way, through to society who calls anyone that deviates off what is expected a rebel. So the longer you live uh, into this traditional makeup of what is expected, the more money you're going to have to spend to unlearn all the crappy viruses it downloaded into you, or the more regrets you're going to have on your deathbed. Those that practice what I'm talking about know, they understand. Those that don't, where does it start? <laughs> well, it all starts with a book then sharing what you learnt about the book, then applying a few things from the book, then sharing that, then meeting other people to compare what they learnt, uh, then maybe completing an online program or going to a workshop, meeting like-minded people, then compounding all of that by going to a multi-day seminar. There is so much data showing how compounding interest over many years brings you riches. But what doesn't get stressed enough is that by compounding learning and education over the years brings you wealth and fulfillment, resilience and increased capacity. Because if you keep doing dumb shit while waiting for your boss or politicians or society to give you permission or tell you what to do, you will always be avoiding your own growth and responsibility. So change because you're meant to. And the best way to change is to be challenged to learn new things. I often mention how much money I've invested in all of those above domains earlier. And at first, before the trajectory took off, I had people laugh at me. Why do you want a business coach? Give me the money and I'll tell you what to do. Ah, you're going away on another one of those three-day cult things, are you? Now, these same people, after 10, 15, 20 years, are the same ones who are the most bitter, miserable, resentful people I know. They stay fixed, uh, they act tough, but we're, well, they're the most afraid and hide their failures in mocking others. I remember many, many years ago when I had little money and I asked a very wealthy person if I could take him to lunch. Friends laughed at me because here's me rubbing two coins together to try to mag magically uh, multiply them and I was going to pay. Like, how stupid was I? Now, the bill did make my eyes water. I didn't have much back then. However, I got to spend two hours with someone who offered me his lifetime of advice. He was not only financially wealthy with a large company, he also contributed a lot to society and had a great family structure, uh, participated in, in great hobbies, and was overall making a huge difference in society. Compare that to the advice we get in schools from the majority of teachers who are controlled by a system that has a purpose. Compliance, expectation and shame. Now I know many teachers who are fantastic human beings and ultimately they all mean well. They have continuously uh, supplemented their education. The ones that, 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 are, that are making a difference, they've supplemented their education and because of that, they've added so much value to a classroom and to a person's life. Think about it. Out of all the teachers we've had, we may have that one that we, rem that we remember fondly. The one that got us, understood us. That's one in what? How many? Teachers are overworked, underpaid and risk averse. That's why they're called teachers, not doers. They're great at telling, poor at doing. Powerful at controlling a child through fear and mediocre at demonstrating out there in the world. So for many, their belief system is in such scarcity and that's who we have mould in our children's minds. People who 
or teachers and, and, and people who rely on a union to get them a 1.5% pay rise every X amount of years because they lack the confidence, the boldness, the negotiation skills, the strength, the power and the communication of value that they bring. This is who we trust to teach our children. Now sure, they bring soft skills like compassion, tolerance, empathy and other nurturing elements which many kids don't get at home. And I'll make another video on that another time about the parents. So for that, I acknowledge teachers. It's, however, there is little supplementation to create balance for out there in the world. So you want evidence of this? Look around society and observe the people complaining and the denial out there. Look at the levels of anxiety and resignation amongst the adult population, where in Australia, one in seven adults are on antidepressants to help numb the, the lot that they have been given. I dare say there's a higher percentage who go to the bottle. So be a learner, always. Find out how you best learn and do a search on the internet. There's going to be countless of people out there whom you resonate with. So always upgrade yourself. Education does not stop after school or after university. It's actually where it all starts. And unfortunately, too many adults, particularly the ones over 35, are still trying to work things out the same way they did in school or waiting to be saved by the teacher. As I once heard, you are under no obligation to be the same person tomorrow as you are today. So, moving on. Damn, I can already see that this is going to be a lot more than a few minutes uh, after that little rant. So let's get into number two. Number two of the, the ways you can become responsible for yourself. Challenge comfort zones. Break free from the comfort of routine and familiar environments. Challenge yourself to step into new and uncomfortable situations. This enables personal growth and resilience. So I've never been too fond of routine and I understand it has its place like uh, in things like business and training. However, spontaneity is where the magic lives. I've learned that becoming comfortable with discomfort introduces your current self with a future self that would not have existed without the discomfort. And the same goes with different environments. Being in construction for 25 or so years, it meant being in different environments across several projects with different people almost every day. I could never understand satisfaction being found in people who went to the same office with the same people, taking the same route to work, eating at the same cafe, having the same conversations and doing the same soul-destroying work every day, day after day, month after month, year after year. Never made sense. When I travelled in my 20s and 30s, I immersed myself in different cultures and particularly in developing countries where I needed to function and work things out while constantly being uncomfortable. When I couldn't box anymore or lift heavy weights due to damaging my shoulders, I took up running. Now, for many, it would be hard to believe now. However, I went from uh, not being able to run three kilometres without losing a lung to running a half marathon in just over 90 minutes in nine weeks of training. So this introduced me to ultra running, where I raced in many mountain events and would train up to 100 kilometres a week out on the trails in all types of weather and conditions, putting my body and my mind through lots of crazy situations. Uh, in 2014, I developed my one-a-day ritual, choosing something which took less than 10 minutes to do, something I wanted to learn or get better at, and then doing it every single day, no matter what, and then compounding the, the new habit, the new behaviour, into next year's challenge. So this year's challenge in 2023 was to make and post a video on YouTube every single day. It's now, what, mid-December, and I haven't missed a day. I went from hating the thought of speaking on camera and posting it publicly to just switching it on and blah. So like I said, there are times when routine is appropriate, but adding some new experiences, new environments and new methods within the routine takes the lid off our simple limitations. It increases our capability, increases our capacity and builds our resilience and adaptability. So, you learn to 
not seek validation from others. Thus, give permission to yourself. You learn to understand what you value and what value you bring and what you're willing to negotiate on. So when you turn up to an interview, you are somewhat interviewing the organisation to see if they are fit for you. I've done this countless, of, uh, countless times. So when you feel you should be better compensated, you do. You, you go, you ask for the pay rise powerfully. You are not relying on a union to do your negotiating. Uh, you have the confidence to do it yourself. When governments change hands, you're not overwhelmed in the uncertainty, instead able to see the opportunity. When everyone else is zigging into mediocrity, dissatisfaction and misery because it's how life is, you're zagging into the open space of options and possibilities. Your choice becomes your responsibility. So choose to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, let's move to number three. Number three, embrace proactive decision making. Okay, I just finished on choice. Use your decision making process to fuel a powerful choice. So instead of waiting for external events, take the initiative to make decisions that align with your values and your goals, and then choose. Too many people get stuck in the decision making process, killing off any potential choices by contaminating them thus leaving themselves with the least favoured of the lot and then blaming external circumstances when it doesn't work out as they wish. So proactively seek opportunities and create your own path, then choose it. What's important here is to identify your path, not your parents' path, uh, your siblings' path, the neighbour John across the road's path, your path. The day I finished school, I got into construction. I loved the physical side of it. Being in the sun all day, the open air, um, the open banter, the pressure, and being able to express myself in my rawness. And you know what? The money was pretty good as well. However, I always knew the industry was misaligned because I valued nature too much and I was part of a system that tore it down to build high-rise concrete structures. I also appreciated growth and people, and I felt the industry was somewhat draconian and littered with too many degenerates who preferred to gamble, uh, sit and watch TV or play games and get drunk. I didn't like that path. Now, I failed school terribly and university was not a path. So I knew what I wanted to do, what my outlook like, but I had no idea about how to do it, how to verbalise it. So I lived in the in-between, in the slipstream. I read continuously to improve and increase my vocabulary, learnt about different facets of business and focused on human behaviour, particularly people's wants and needs and how they express them. Started a company, grew it, started another one, grew that, operated in different cities, built a very large team, uh, had the company managed to free up my time so I can learn more about what I really wanted to learn, people and their behaviours. Uh, and the, these are the things that really interested me. All the while, I had countless test subjects in my team and the industry to practice with. So I was on my path. However, there were no signposts. It was nothing but a dirt track which I had to experience and feel my way through. And in all this time, while in construction, I observed the conversations between other contractors who complained that they weren't making money because of the government, uh, the weather, the competition, their employees, this, that, everything. All the while, I just wasn't buying into it and just nodding my head. Sticking to the outcome I wanted. When I realised I had enough, very important thing to, to learn and understand. I took what many said was a stupid risk and I gave it all up. I left the industry while it was booming. Got out. And after 25 years, I saw too many miserable people who defined themselves by the environment they worked in. They had terrible relationships with their children and their partners. Their bodies were broken beyond, this, uh, beyond repair. And most of all, they became addicted to conflict, substances, alcohol, and money. I made a powerful choice off the back of a powerful decision-making process, and I couldn't feel more free. 
I decided on what I didn't want and powerfully chose what I did want. The path then opened up into the space I envisioned from when I was really a teenager. Let's move into number four. Number four is build a supportive network. What's this look like? Surround yourself with individuals who share similar values and ambitions. Create a network that encourages personal and self-development and holds you accountable for your actions. So I'm sure we've all heard it all before. You are the sum total of the five people you hang around with. So to put it, but, uh, to put it bluntly, if you hang out with a bunch of drop kicks, you're most likely a drop kick. Now, I'm not suggesting you remove that childhood best friend simply because he loves nothing more than watching football while eating pizza and drinking beer. Now, and their biggest ambition being to make it to the next paycheck. There's nothing wrong with having a junk meal now and then. However, what is detrimental is making it your every meal. With so many social platforms out there, there is no excuse to take up a hobby with like-minded people. Uh, these people who also bring diversity, the trick here is to not create an echo chamber. There's, if there's such a thing, um, you want diverse sameness. Now, if you really want to excel in what you do, put yourself around people who expect and support you more than you do of yourself and be the same person for them. Where I really learned this lesson was when a few years ago, uh, when I was growing my company, I would often catch up with two of my best mates, two great friends who I knew from childhood. I made the mistake of sharing my business intentions and goals with them, and they were very big, very large, uh, not fully understanding that they had employee mindsets. It ended up ruining the friendship because of what I thought was a lack of support and more of mocking banter towards me. Fortunately, after a few years, the friendships have been fixed. However, it was a big lesson for me. Uh, don't have business conversations with employee-minded people. Uh, don't have financial discussions with financially poor people. Uh, don't share deep secrets with people who gossip. Um, don't have personal or relationship growth conversations with fixed-minded and un unwilling people. Don't be optimistic with a pessimist. So I'm sure you get my drift here. When I started sharing my ambitions with ambitious and ethically aligned people, I started building a network of support and accountability. And some of the best and most trusting uh, friendships and relationships have come from these environments where we have no historical context. So like I said, if you have childhood friendships which don't grow you, but bring some fun and fond memories, choose the time, the relevant frame of mind, an appropriate place to entertain them. You can recover from a rich drunk meal, or junk meal, <laughs> a rich junk meal uh, that you have now and then, but not if you're consuming it day after day. Nurture optimal environment so you can perform more optimally. Number five, what have we got? Promote open communication. So demonstrate your beliefs and values. Engage in open conversations with others. Share your perspective and encourage constructive dialogue to create understanding and change. Now, being vocal about your beliefs and values does not mean forcing them onto other people. It also doesn't mean to be radically fixed to them like a zealot who is unwilling to learn a new perspective. And what it does mean is uh, confidently standing your ground, standing for what you stand for and communicating it openly, while at the same time being open and receptive to the beliefs and values of others. It's about being committed yet not attached and also to be willing to walk away rather than comply or fit in when you know it doesn't feel right. This is the place where self-assurance, confidence and high self-esteem reside. Once again, this is where an increased vocabulary helps. When we have more words, we can better communicate our perspectives, uh, better understand the meaning of these words, lead constructive dialogue and negotiate or facilitate change. There's nothing worse than being in a group situation with someone and then when each party goes their own way, 
one of the people then starts disagreeing, starts bitching, whining and complaining about what happened. I'm like, why didn't you speak up before? All these things, if they're important to you, what's the go? But no, they just prefer the gossip. Gossip is the currency of the poor. And in my experience, people who have low confidence, low self-esteem and self-assurance tend to be the biggest facilitators of gossip. In today's society, it seems that if someone shares an opinion which goes against the status quo, they are labelled as polarising, when all they are is doing is sharing an opinion which many disagree with. Many adults seem to still be living in an outdated, childlike world existence of children should be seen but not heard. Why are they choosing to still live like that? You've got a voice, learn to use it. I came from a very strong, opinionated and passionate family dynamic. Comes with having a Greek background. Yeah, I then went on to a very tough, bold industry in, in construction where I had to be, like I said, bold in my communication. Otherwise, I would have got eaten every single day. Now, I'm not saying to be rude, dismissive or arrogant. It's more about setting clear and definite boundaries. And those things may happen while you're experimenting with this, but you're getting better. And sometimes to understand what those boundaries are, we not only have to cross them, but we have to allow others to cross them. It's who we be and what we do afterwards which is most important. Now I remember, here's a good story, uh, we had a, a contract on a $400 million project and in every contractor's weekly planning meeting, the man running the project spoke terribly to every contractor. He was, he was, he was an arsehole. When he started with me, I simply just got up and walked out of the meeting without saying a word. He rung me. Don't you ever f***ing walk out on me. I, I hung up. He rang me again, screaming and sweats. I hung up. Then he rang me the third time. And, I, and when I answered, uh, before he could say a word, I told him, change your tone or I'm going to keep hanging up. So he spoke with a different levelness asking me if my team will accomplish everything that needed to be accomplished for the upcoming concrete pour. I said, we will, we always do. He then asked me to come up to the office so we can have a chat. I said, okay. So I went up and once there he started his intimidation again, threatening to tear up our contract. So I just silently got up, walked out and I didn't answer his calls all day. Eventually it escalated and the construction manager called me and I boldly communicated that as a professional I would not be spoken to like one of his minions and unless things change I will cease all verbal communications. Now I knew the contract couldn't be torn up and I also knew that them communicating to me through my team on high level matters would be a massive pain in the ass for them. So we ended up having another meeting the next day where I laid out my standards of communication. He could speak to every other contractor as he wished. That's their problem if they uh, didn't want to do anything about it. However, with me, I expect to be spoken to as a business owner who is exceeding all expectations and continuously bringing great value to the project. So what's the lesson in this? Teach people how to communicate to you with you. I went from viscerally hating this person to having one of the closest, most trusting relationships I ever had in the industry. We went on to win every contract thereafter and done many projects together. And this person was heavily responsible for much of the wealth which I acquired uh, while I was in the industry. Also, and, and best of all, I even watched his communication change with other contractors over the years. This happened because I communicated my standards, was very vocal and demonstrative of them, and most of all, I boldly stuck to them, which in turn created a powerful change in the behaviour of the other person. So it not only created an unlikely friendship, it bought me millions of dollars in future contracts. The last one, number six, in the easy ways to become responsible for yourself is Lead by example. Demonstrate the behaviours and the habits you wish to see in the world. So by living in alignment with your values, you become a catalyst for change, inspiring others to take responsibility for their lives and make positive choices. Because in an era where there is little trust in corporate and political leadership, 
I still can't understand how people are looking to them for guidance and for permission and validation. We get told to dob in a neighbour on some anonymous hotline and publicly shame someone who doesn't comply to often some stupidity while all the while the ones making these requests are the sleaziest snakes amongst us and they keep proving and showing this. Nurture your own leadership based on your own unique qualities and there will be those who appreciate and support you and there will be those who are totally misaligned and will get out of your way. Because if you play the game of always wanting to be liked, you're most likely selling yourself out or sitting on the fence pulling splinters out of your ass. So for me, responsibility means taking ownership and being uh, of cause to what matters most to me in my life. Yes, it's about me. I'm responsible for myself. Responsible for what goes wrong. Responsible for what happens the way uh, I want it to happen. Responsible if the team have stuffed something up. Uh, responsible if I let someone rip me off. Responsible if I miss my little girl's soccer game because something important uh, came up. Responsible if I lose my temper. Uh, responsible for the success I get. More than that, I'm responsible for those around me in my life because they are in my life. It's about me. I value things like autonomy and, 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 and passion and individuality. So if I go against those values and sell myself out, I become a fraud to myself and energetically I know it. I can bitch and blame and say I was made to comply. Responsibility is a choice. I can accept it and I can move on or I can accept it and do something about it. However, I can't continuously lay blame and make excuses. My earliest memory of being responsible for myself was when I was 12 years old. And funnily enough, the actions, or my actions caused responsibility to be taken off me. Now, I was a school prefect in my final year before going into high school. And one day in the playground, a friend of mine was getting picked on, bullied. So upon intervening, I ended up having to not only defend him, but also defend myself and finish the fight. So I got into trouble for stopping a fight and lost the responsibility that came with being a prefect. And I clearly remember that I did not give a stuff about it in that young mind of mine. I could have saved myself by admitting what I did was wrong. However, as a 12 year old, I didn't believe I was and I didn't have the vocabulary to express that. I was back in a mate who was getting bullied. I was called stubborn and told I showed no remorse for my actions. Now, it was at that young age my young mind realised that there was something wrong with the system. It gave me, uh, however, credibility in the playground. So fast forward to, what, 44 years old, and I'll still defend someone who is being taken advantage of, friend or stranger, and I have countless examples of doing so. It's my responsibility. So when you turn up with courage, make difficult decisions and get back up after having your ass handed to you time and time again, you come back stronger, it motivates you, it sparks something within which you never knew you had. And when you support that spark and, and supporting and generating life is what you're doing. This is what leadership is. Not some bullshit title somebody gave themselves because they made the corporation millions, yet they don't even know their kid's favourite colour or best friend's name. Or they walk past an old lady who is having her purse ripped from her hands in the street. Or those that turn their back in conflict and avoid provocable conversations and scheme behind people's backs for their own personal advancement. Lead by your own example and through your own values and people will know that you are authentic and what you are capable of. They know where you stand and they know where they stand. So, these are the six easy things you can immediately start doing to take responsibility for yourself. I could have gone on for hours. I said a couple of minutes and I don't even know where we're at right now. Pick one and work with it until you see some traction. Then pick another one, and then so forth. If you try to do them all at once, there's a chance you're gonna get overwhelmed and find yourself disinterested, just, back, uh, just like back in school. So understand the power to create change lies within each one of us, each individual, waiting to be 
harnessed through proactive and intentional living. Instead of passively waiting for external events, take charge of your life by curating a frame of mind of continuous improvement, setting clear aligned goals and, and aligning your behaviours with your values. Because, well, by challenging comfort zones and enhancing self-awareness and building a supportive network, you can break free from the constraints of waiting for permission or external validation. Is that not a boring way to live anyway? Because the adventure towards change may be bumpy initially. However, through perseverance, curiosity, continual action and reflection of that action, along with a commitment to self-growth, you can ride the slipstream of life and shape a future that reflects who you are and who you're becoming. So there's no call to action here, however. Um, there's a call to action. <laughs> Let go of whatever you think is holding you back. Make life happen. Lead by example to inspire yourself to forge the path you choose. Lastly, if you have trouble identifying what your core values are, we have a free program, Uncovering Your Values, part one. Part two is even better. It's values in action. And I promise you that you will have a lot of fun doing it because the methods are simple and extremely relatable because we offer tools and instructions for you to reflect on your own personal experiences so you can help uncover them. It's like a little probing game that we do because once you've uncovered your values, they become your own terms and conditions, the standards in which you lead with. And like I said, it's free and the link will be in the description. Lastly, take what you will.